Hey guys, it's Lisa. Welcome to Banning, Panning and Beyond and another quarterly update. So this update is in regards to my low buy. Um, as you may be aware, I actually transitioned over from a no buy to a low buy and I have been going on the low buy for about three months now. So I had to really put a little bit of thought into this video and I haven't made notes so I may not cover everything that I wanted to say um, but I will do my best. So um, I basically have decided in all good conscience to come off my low buy. I, my husband and I got our tax returns um, back which we never know from year to year how we're going to go and some years uh, we've even had to pay tax. We do not rely on our tax returns um, to pay our bills. Um, it's They don't form part of our budget. So this year we actually got um, quite good tax returns and we decided to um, split the money between us. Originally we were going to um, save half and then split the other half between us but I know my husband has a Harley and it is um, due for replacement on quite a few things. It's 10 years old now and he really wanted to use his share on sort of updating his Harley and replacing some parts on it. So uh, that meant that he was going to need more than just a quarter basically of the tax return. So we decided to just evenly split our tax returns between us and it was um, up to us what we spent it on. He was going to spend it on his hobby, I was going to spend it on mine. Now I didn't put a lot of thought into it at the time and I, my full intention was to not spend all of my share and that I was going to save some of it um, later down the track. And um, then I was just going to basically go back to my low buy. I didn't think that it, it should form part of my low buy, um, but now looking at it in all good conscience, I can't say that um, it would be fair to say that I was still on a low buy when I had a substantial amount of money to spend. And yes, I did spend it. So uh, I, I have people that I've been bouncing off, um, Andrea, Pretty as a Peacock, and also Siobhan, uh, just in regards to how I was feeling about it, um, because as Andrea basically said to me, it was like opening up the floodgates. Uh, I was really struggling to rein myself back in uh, and to not exceed the amount of money that I had to spend from my tax return. Um, and unfortunately, that didn't happen. Um, I haven't crunched the final numbers yet, and um, I would have only maybe just started, sort of maybe just gone over. Uh, but I just feel regardless, um, it seemed to be kind of pointless to be going back to a low buy. I only intended on going through till the end of December. And I honestly, I already feel like I've broken it. Um, I guess there's no point trying to justify it. Um, so yeah, I've just decided not to go back on it. So I guess the question is, um, how do I feel about it? Um, do I feel like I failed? And the honest answer is no, I, I don't feel like I failed. Um, and you know, like if I hadn't gotten my tax return, I would have continued to plot along for the next two and a half months um, or probably closer to three months um, and then I would have probably just gone and spent that money anyway because I would have saved it and I would have spent it then uh, and I think that I, I could have done it if I hadn't gotten the um, tax return at all I would have just stuck to my low buy but that's not how my real life went and I wanted to disclose it to you guys. Um, there's no point um, being dishonest about it. Uh, I need to have my integrity about me. So I felt that, you know, it, I I really just had to um, basically call my low buy um, done and move on. So where do I go from here? Um, 
and how do I feel? So as I said, I don't feel like I failed. I don't believe a no buy or a low buy um, success is determined by how long you do it for. It all depends on your individual goals, what your reasonings are for being on them. Um, for me, it was never purely financial. Financial was not the main motivation for going on these. Um, I think mainly, I mean, I don't want to keep rehashing stuff that a lot of you may have already seen, but uh, the main reason for me going on a no buy it was more to do with trying to focus on the collection I already had, uh, reacquainting myself with it and getting to know it better uh, without being overwhelmed by the constant flow of all the new products that were coming on the market and I believe I successfully did that for six months and I managed to um, do a, an, a stock take of all of my um, uh, products. I catalogued them all on a spreadsheet. I'm working through that spreadsheet now. I am still concentrating on finishing, using up, panning, that sort of thing, um, but not for my coloured cosmetics because the, I just don't, I don't know if I'll ever pan. An eyeshadow in my collection is quite large and um, I think that in the six months I was on my no buy, I really got out of it what I needed to. Um, and then transitioning to a low buy, I think for, for me, um, a low buy was a lot harder than a no buy. I feel like a no buy, even a replacements only no buy, it's, I mean, obviously everyone sets their own rules and has their own caveats, but I found it so much easier because it was a simple question of, is it a replacement? If it wasn't, it was just a no go. So that was much easier to stick to. Once I transitioned over to my low buy, um, which I maintained my same same budget that I had for my replacements in my no buy, but I opened up that I no longer was restricted to just replacements and I could buy the coloured cosmetics. So what I got out of that in the last three months was that I had to start making choices again and I felt that I actually succeeded in that regard in the fact that when I wanted to buy something I had to really analyze whether or not I genuinely liked it um, whether or not it was for me uh, that it was going to be suitable for my skin tone because I have quite a lot of products I have bought um, in the past that are just for the hype and I've never used them some I've still got a lot of products in my collection that I haven't used um, not because I bought them for the wrong reasons, but because I was so focused on just keeping up with all the new releases and I was buying so much that I was not putting on makeup enough to even dip into them and they were getting packed away and then I was getting something else and I was, you know, not using that. And, you know, even now I'm only doing makeup maybe one to two times a week um, because I guess I'm, it's only when I film or if I'm doing something for Instagram. So social media has been really good for me in that regard because it's making me use my products. I've also restarted the Roulette Pan Collab um, panning project, so or Project Pan, and um, that has made me be using products in my collection that I would normally overlook. And I'm actually, that's what I've got on today. Um, you can see I've got my ColourPop glitter on there, so I'll, I'll link that first intro video um, if you guys are interested in seeing what um, products I actually got in that um, project. So um, yeah, I think that all in all, um, I definitely got out of what out of my no buy and low buy what I needed to. I do feel a little bit bad about the fact that I didn't get right through to the end of the year and I do think my tipping point was getting that tax refund that, like I said, if I had never gotten it, um, I would have just kept plodding along till the end of the year and then I was no longer intending on having a budget. Um, I wanted to move over to just more of a smart buy, so I guess that's where I'm headed now. Um, I'm, I don't know whether or not my interpretation of what a smart buy is, is 
the same as what yours may be uh, but for me it's about buying products that I've put a lot of thought into that I'm not buying just because of the hype and things I will actually use so uh, some people may do a smart buy and still have a budget because there, there's just so many um, different um, forms um, that these um, projects can take and this is where I'm going to go so I will not have a budget um, but that does not mean that I intend on just going all out and blowing a whole heap of money um, but I, I just know that I didn't enjoy being on a low buy um, I would much rather occasionally if I need to go on back onto a no buy uh, so I'm not ruling that out I, I may find that if I do get to a point again where I am buying way too much I feel overwhelmed um, buy my collection that I will put myself on another no buy for how long I don't know um, I'm just going to see how um, this flows naturally and yeah and then share it with you guys so I really hope that no one out there is disappointed in me by all means if you are let me know um, you know whether you feel like I've, I've let you down or not I know from watching other people that have um, done similar things that in general most people are quite understanding that it is somebody's own personal journey and that um, life changes happen and you adjust accordingly uh, this is definitely not my plan so there is a small sense of, of failure there but overall I really want to stay focused on the positives that I've gotten out of it so um, like I said, let me know guys how you feel. Um, I will be trying to get my um, empties and exits up soon. I have already filmed it. I can't say I was overly happy with the actual um, video for a few different reasons. So I may re-film it yet, I'm not too sure. Um, but it will not be going up um, probably for maybe another two weeks because I've already got other videos scheduled and a couple of other videos planned that I want to um, get done so it, it will be up at some point but I know the entries will be done separately um, I do have a few orders still waiting to come in the shipping to Australia has been absolutely atrocious the updates on the tracking have been atrocious so I would like to wait for a few of those products to actually arrive and then I will um, probably do them all in one video where I go from there I'm not sure whether I will still do a monthly entries video or not whether I will just share as things arrive like I said I'm not planning on going out um, and just now blowing a whole heap of money on on products I've had a bit of a splurge with my tax return I feel that once those um, products start arriving um, that that will curb the desire to spend any more money. I actually have to say that I think the um, the issues I've had with shipping um, lately have turned me off placing any more orders. There are two more um, palettes that do interest me that I would like to buy, but if I can't get them, one of them's not limited edition, so it doesn't really matter. Um, one of them is, but if I don't get it, I don't get it. And that's the difference I've found now. It doesn't matter I've realized that I really can make do with the collection that I've got I have bought um, some stuff from indie brands that I've really wanted to try so that's mainly where my money went and um, I have been thinking about the Natasha Denona glam palette generally cool tones are not for me uh, but it is a beautiful palette and I was talking to Nona from my so-called life 1977 about it um, we were we, We've got an upcoming collab. Um, we haven't sort of nutted out the details yet. So um, but that will be happening So uh, look forward to that one. We've just got to come down to choosing a palette that we want to use um, but I am thinking that I've learnt one of the other things I've learnt through all of this is that if I do want a palette and I'm not sure about it um, because 
I haven't got a Sephora close to me, so it's something I would really like to see um, firsthand before I made that final decision. But I have learnt to um, attempt to dupe um, palettes, so I can generally see whether or not I, I've already got stuff in my collection, uh, how I feel about the colour story once I have duped it, and um, that will help me make that final decision on whether to go ahead with a purchase or not. Um, until I can make a trip to Sephora. Obviously we can't swatch things at the moment, but definitely seeing something in um, first hand makes a difference. So uh, so anyway, that's where I'm at guys. And uh, I really wanted to get this video up before I got any other ones posted for the month. So uh, yeah, definitely let me know what you think, um, how it makes you feel, uh, whether you're okay with it, whether you're not. Um, I, I think in general, most people are going to be fairly supportive and understanding. Like I said, the most important thing to me was to be honest with you guys about it. Um, so take from that what you will. Um, but yeah, definitely let me know. Uh, if you're totally disappointed in me and I'm going to lose you as a subscriber, then that's okay too. Um, but yeah, I think, think I've talked enough about it and uh, I'll get to editing this video and try and get it up uh, tomorrow. So yeah, thank you for uh, getting this far if you've uh, watched this all the way through and uh, I'll catch you hopefully 